Welcome, beloved, once again to our Bread of Life mini message this week again. <laughs> if you've got your Bibles with you, please turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 12. 2 Corinthians chapter 12. And we're going to read three verses there. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, and we'll read from verse 7 until verse 9. 7 to 9. Ready? Here we go. And lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh. Ouch. The messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice, that it might depart from me. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, and the power of Christ may rest upon me. The power of Christ may rest upon me. Up to there, our reading, brother beloved. I've titled this morning's message with a strange question I is okay. Is you? You, you may wonder where did I learn my English. <laughs> this is the, a direct translation from my mother tongue, Afrikaans. It seems to highlight the present a little bit differently. I is okay. Is you? Think what Paul must have felt like. He's a dedicated apostle. And ask God three times that his specific problem may be removed. And then he gets an unexpected answer. My grace is sufficient for thee. A preacher once said that God took his youngest child away through death. After laying the child's body to rest in the cemetery, he felt led to preach on the meaning of trial. He put a sermon together but realized that the words were not honestly true. Yeah, it gets like that. He knelt and prayed and pleaded with God that His grace would be sufficient for him. And when he opened his eyes, he saw a plaque against the wall that his mum gave him to put up at the holiday, uh, holiday resort where his little one was taken away from them. The words... My grace is sufficient for thee. Jumped out with the word is being highlighted. It was as if he had heard an audible voice. He clicked straight away. God cannot make it more sufficient than he has made it now. How can you ask that? Which, which is? Think about it. That's simple. Not my grace shall be, or may be, but is sufficient for thee. It's personal. It's for me and you. You who are listening today might wonder, is there a God who listens to your problems? You might have also gone through a tragedy recently and wonder, is there a God who listens and cares? I would like to illustrate the answer to this through the following story. Is there a God who listens to your problems? A Christian went to a barbershop barber shop to have his hair cut and his beard trimmed. As the barber began to work, they began to have good conversation. They talked about so many things and various subjects. When they eventually touched on the subject of God, the barber said, I don't believe that your God exists. Why do you say that? Asked the Christian. Well, you have to go out to the street and realize that God doesn't exist. Tell me, if God exists, would there be so many sick people? Would there be, an abandoned, would there be abandoned children? If God existed, there would be neither suffering nor pain. 
I can't imagine a loving God who would allow all these things. And the Christian thought for a moment, but didn't respond. The barber finished his job and the man left the shop. Just then, he saw a man out in the street with long, stringy, dirty hair. Just look at it. And an untrimmed beard. He looked dirty and untidy. The Christian immediately turned back and entered the barber shop again and said to the barber, You know what? Barbers don't exist. Oh, how can you say that? Asked the surprised barber. I'm here and I'm a barber and I just worked on you. No, the, the, the Christian exclaimed. Barbers don't exist because if they did, there would be no people with dirty long hair and untrimmed beards like that man outside. Ah, but barbers do exist, said the barber. What happens is, people do not come to me. Yes, exactly, said the Christian. That's the point. God also does exist. What happens is people don't come to him and do not look for him to grab onto his life jacket to save them. That's why there's so much pain and suffering in the world. Don't you also want to come to him today if you're hurting? And surrender your whole life to Jesus today. He's only a simple but repentant prayer away. Don't delay in becoming a born-again believer today. Because then God will take care of you. Amen. Be not dismayed, what a